Okay guys, to start off this weekly webinar uh, slash open house as I like to call it, because uh, I like to welcome people to this and, and give you a little bit of a taste of uh, some of what we do and some of what we look at in the trade group. Remember you can get more information at daytradersfx.com if you'd like to get a free trial to the trade group. You just click on that about button and you can see that there are uh, a couple of uh, membership levels you can get involved in. And it's all at daytradersfx.com. So have a look and let me know if you have any questions. And of course, make sure to follow me on Twitter. There's lots of updates coming out there. Twitter.com forward slash daytradersfx. So that's what we're looking at. That's where we're headed. Uh, what I want to bring up first is the weekly schedule. We've got quite a bit of stuff. Again, even being a holiday week, we've got definitely some things that are interesting to look at uh, and semi-important here. So as we look at, uh, we, we've already seen a little bit of news so far this week, pending home sales for the U.S. Excuse me, came out a little tiny bit worse than expected. Uh, not even a little tiny bit worse, a bit worse <laughs> than expected. Um, so that, that had a little uh, impact on things. We'll talk about how that affected the, the markets uh, when we get to the charts here. Uh, the next big news, we don't have anything else to two worth mentioning until tomorrow uh, 2 a.m. we have the inflation reports uh, for the UK and that can be a bit of a mover so that's coming up in just about uh, 10 hours or so so that's not too far out and then for our live US trading session tomorrow morning we'll see the building permits uh, housing starts uh, also commonly called um, and that's tomorrow at uh, 5.30 a.m. chat time. And then we've got consumer confidence, which is a bit of a good mover. And that's a little bit after that. And then we'll have trade balance for New Zealand. Wednesday, we have uh, some GDP numbers for the U.K. That's pretty important. Durable goods for the U.S., pretty important. Uh, unemployment claims, pretty uninteresting. They're going to be right around 300,000, which they always are. Um, a little bit of New Zealand news, business uh, confidence. And then we have uh, some Aussie uh, private capital expen expenditure reports. Um, these are all, you know, medium movers. Uh, durable goods is a pretty big U.S. mover. Uh, GDP and durable goods can be pretty big. As far as the business confidence for New Zealand, uh, private capital for Australia, not huge movers. They can be, but typically 90% of the time they're really not major movers. So most of the action should be in the morning uh, with the U.S. and U.K. news. Uh, and then going into Thursday, we have, uh, it's a bank holiday, that's Thanksgiving in the U.S., so U.S. markets are closed. But one of the reasons that we see a lot of movement this day is because these are the, the last days of the month. So the 28th, 29th are the last trading days of November, uh, and then we get into December. And remember, the month-end fix is always a bit of a mover. It's always a little bit crazy, um, and so that's why we kind of watch out for that. The end of the month fix is pretty... Uh, pretty pretty big movement typically there's pretty big movement okay guys so we talked about I posted some trades you can see in the chat area I posted some trades uh, last night uh, for everyone here for the pound dollar shorting against 162.60 and that played out very nicely and looking to get long and buy Aussie uh, at the break of uh, 91.90 and target some of these upper levels we're gonna talk about what that is. Uh, let me bring that screen back here and how that's all going. Uh, but there's definitely some good trades in the works already there. Um, I didn't have anything specifically on the euro dollar posted last night, but there are some good things to talk about here. I am ultimately a bear on euro dollar. We have a missed daily pivot down here. We don't have any missed weekly pivots anywhere on the euro dollar. The, the, uh, the weekly pivots have been taken out, so we've cleared the weekly pivots out. One thing that we do have, though, that is kind of just lurking, if we go back a couple of weeks here, uh, back to Friday the 1st of November, we go back basically three weeks, uh, three whole weeks, a little three and a half weeks actually, uh, we see we have a missed daily pivot lurking up here at 136.30. Uh, maybe a daily pivot's a big deal, maybe it's not a big deal, but then to top that all off, uh, from this big movement right here, this move down um, from from the high of 138.30 all the way down here to this 130, basically 132.95, 13300, uh, we can see that the 61.8 of that movement also happens to be 136. Uh, 26 so just about 136.30 as well so we have a 61.8 percent fib level and we have a missed daily pivot that goes back there so so that's that's 
something to focus on, something that's kind of important, something to watch. Now, what we're going to be looking at here is the euro has a very nice likelihood of kind of bouncing around here. So the channel that I'm watching very specifically is 134.90, not just because it's the weekly low, but because there's some other things happening there. You can see that this has been a very tested level, 134.90. So that's a pretty important one. Another reason I like that is because that's come down and tested the 200 moving average, kind of uh, established this trend line, and then it's bounced up off that. So so it's a, it's a pretty important little level here, this 132.90. Um, if we break 132.90, I'm definitely targeting, or excuse me, 134.90, not 132.90, 134.90, as you can see on the charts there. Um, so if we break 134.90, I'm going to be looking to test at least 134.00, so a nice little 90 pip run. But ultimately, if we break that, we should be headed into 132.50 area, 132.00. Uh, so that's kind of ultimately what I'm watching for uh, on the euro dollar here. Um, that's on the low side. Uh, on the high side, what I'm looking for is this 135, 75, 80 area. If we break this, then I think we've got a very nice chance of going into that 136.30. Now that's not a huge run. 136.30 uh, above this level only uh, uh, is is just it's just a little over 50 pips really so it's not a huge move but I think we're absolutely headed into that that's good for 50 pips and I'll take 50 pips I don't need 50 pips um, so so the break of that 136.30 uh, is going to be the level to watch there now of course we we, we can see these kinds of uh, uh, trend lines here oh it's gonna make me there we go um, we, we, we've got these kind of trend lines that need to be watched so we, you, you can see kind of a little bit of a triangle forming right there. Um, so again, if we break above that, that might, you know, might be taking us into something that'll be, uh, you know, just above 135, 50, 60 area. But ultimately, I'd like to see a break of this 135, 75, and even 135, 80 area before I start getting majorly long euro dollar. Otherwise, I'm looking for the break of 134.90. It's going to be all about these levels. So again, 134.90, we should be able to hold on to a break of 134.90 into 132.50, 132.00. Um, the break of 135.75.80 area should take us into 136.30. And, and ultimately, we could be even potentially headed into a bit of a double top there, um, uh, back up into those big highs of 138.30 uh, area. But I'm not super counting on that yet. I'm just going to kind of play it small and slow and see how it goes. Uh, but again, this 135.75 uh, area should be at least good for a 50 pip break uh, and something we could probably let ride. But keep an eye on this 134.90 and look for that move down there. Um, so, and the other thing to mention on the euro dollar is that we do have uh, missed daily pivots on either side. So 136.30 uh, missed daily pivot is obviously 100 pips up. And then we've got this missed daily pivot back here from just Friday, which is almost 80 pips away. So we're right in the middle of two daily pivot points. And again, we have no major missed weekly pivot points uh, from the last couple of years that are, that are left unreached at this point. Does anybody have any questions about the euro dollar? Anything you guys are looking at there? Anything I failed to uh, to mention? Bring up any anything there? Uh, anything on euro dollar? Uh, please do let me know. And of course, I'll post these notes in the chat. And I and this is, is recorded, and I will uh, uh, send out the recording as well and make sure that everybody gets that. Okay, so that's euro dollar. That's what we're looking for. We're going to see where this thing goes. But 135.75, big, important, crazy important level. Okay, here's the pound dollar. We talked about this last night, and I said we need to be shorting against 162.60. Uh, get in as close as possible so that we don't have to have huge stops. But 162.60 uh, is our big level, is our big kind of triple top level. And remember, 162.60 also happens to be the highest point of all of these right here. So that, that's our 162.60. This little guy right there, you can see that high is 162.59.9. Uh, and then we get into this high right here, which is about 162.56, so almost 162.60. And then we have the high here, which is uh, 162.35. Uh, so 
So we've definitely been making a nice little triple top here. Now remember, one of the main reasons that I'm super bearish pound dollar is because we have this nice triple top and I've seen the pound dollar make these triple tops before. This seems pretty reminiscent of a huge move down. Triple top, one, two, three, and then a huge move down. Nice double bottom, we're back up into this top, one, two, three. Hopefully we've got a big move down in the works as well. Now one thing to remember on this pound dollar, um, is the fact that we have uh, very nicely crossed the 23% fib, which leads me to believe that we're going to have a nice little run down into that 38% fib. And what we're looking to do is get short as close to that high as possible um, so that we can minimize that draw, uh, drawdown on, on stop loss side and target this 15700 area. So that's absolutely what I'm doing. That's number one. Number two, we have a missed weekly pivot right here, uh, which is down at, uh, let's just get down to the nitty gritty here. Uh, 160, just, just about 160.50 uh, is, is that weekly pivot point. But then again, if we scroll back just a little bit further, you'll remember that we have a uh, another missed week weekly pivot, which is back here at 156.12. So another couple hundred pips. So I am definitely going to put the fate in the side of the pound dollar and the pivot points. Now we had some missed weekly, or excuse me, some missed daily pivots uh, way back here that were uh, up around this area. And Friday um, of of last week, and then the open of this week, we took those pivots out. So so there's no more missed daily pivots or weekly pivots to the upside. There's just missed daily and weekly pivots down below and a triple top, um, and we've crossed the 23% fib. I honestly don't know how much more bearish I could be pound dollar right now than I currently am with all these signs. 23% fib, missed weekly, and missed daily pivots down below. Um, and so, so that's kind of what we're looking for, uh, and, and we want to continue to sell this rally. So for the moment, if the pound dollar does retrace a whole bunch, it's definitely come off these lows a little bit, 35, you know, 38 pips. Uh, we want to be looking for opportunities to short back against at least this weekly high here. So we're only about 65 or so pips away from the weekly high. So let's look for opportunities to continue to short that, and we're targeting uh, at least last week's missed weekly pivot. So we're going for, um, you know, that, that, that kind of short-term uh, target at the very minimum, which is that 160.50 uh, uh, weekly pivot back here of last week, 160.50. Uh, currently, we're still 118 pips away from that, so I'm still targeting that missed weekly pivot, and I think there's some good opportunities there. So continue to sell the rallies against 162, 60, 50, 60 area, um, and target the the moves uh, into uh, 160.50 and uh, ultimately down into 156.15 area. So that's what I'm looking for on the pound dollar. So short term stuff, again, this is more of kind of a weekly outlook. So I want to see if this is going to retrace and pull back up higher and give us that opportunity to short about 50 to 75 pips higher than current market price. So we can keep those stops real, real tight and real nice. Uh, even 50 pips higher uh, is great. We've got a little missed daily pivot right here. Uh, but I really like if we get back up there and we can short against those highs once again on this pound dollar. So. So target for this week is a very minimum, uh, you know, 160, but ultimately I would like to see some big moves down into, you know, into 15700, um, which is that 38% fib, um, and, and ultimately into that 15612, 15615 missed weekly pivot. So selling rallies against 16260 still. Uh, Aussie dollar. The Aussie dollar is uh, is a nice little one. Now, one important thing about the Aussie dollar, one very important thing about the Aussie dollar is, uh, well, a couple of important things. Um, we had a missed weekly pivot on the Aussie dollar, which was all the way back here. It was 12 weeks or so ago, um, and it was back here at one, or excuse me, at 91.30, 91.30, all the way back here. We had some gaps and some missed weekly pivots and so on. 91.30 was our missed weekly pivot on the Aussie dollar, and it has just taken that out. You can see that the low, the current low on us. Uh, Aussie dollar US dollar was 91.19 so we very nicely took out that missed weekly pivot from so many weeks ago now we have two missed upper weekly pivots we have this one that's currently at 
uh, 92, about 92.30. And then as you can see here, we have a weekly pivot all the way back here um, on the Aussie dollar as well. It's all the way up at 96.30. Uh, so 92.30 and 96.30. So this is a nice little 500 or so pip run, uh, which I don't hate. Uh, so in looking at that, we need to be starting to look for some opportunities to pick up a little bit on the Aussie dollar short side of things, or excuse me, long. So we broke this little trend line right here, which was great. and We made a little run. I wanted to see that weekly high get taken out, which we've taken out. We're sitting, uh, as you can see, about 91, uh, just a little bit above 91.90. Our first target is this missed weekly pivot, and we're, we're just kind of sitting at this... Um, at this 23% fib, uh, but ultimately I'm going to start looking for targets. Uh, very, very near short-term targets are going to be 38% fib, 92.45, 92.45. Uh, but I think we have some nice opportunities because not only do we have two missed weekly pivots, we have a couple of missed daily pivots as well in this whole process. So you can see one daily pivot right here, it's right around 92.50. We have another daily pivot that's around 93.50 area. Um, and I think, oh, that might be the only daily pivot. Well, and then we have this daily pivot. Uh, that is also missed way back here that's up around 95.65 which has not been hit and then our weekly pivot that's 93 or 96.30 uh, so I'm starting just because of what the pivot points are telling me right now I'm starting to get a little short-term bullish Aussie dollar now I don't necessarily share that sentiment on pound dollar euro dollar I'm pretty bearish pound dollar euro dollar can really go either way at this point but the Aussie dollar needs to be looked at as a nice buy opportunity now I posted in the notes that uh, 9190 was a good little break area and I think it is um, but really what the goal is is we need to be looking to get long against this weekly low now we're 70 pips off that if this dips down a little bit that's okay let's let's look to get long uh, Aussie dollar against this 91.20 uh, area and let's target 92.45 uh, is, is our big target to, to start off with and then uh, ultimately we're going to start to look to take out these daily pivots and our missed weekly pivot all the way back there at 96.30 so I'm I'm not totally bullish Aussie dollar yet but I think I think we should have a nice little bump up right about now uh, with these missed weekly pivots and daily pivots and so on I think we're ready for about a hundred pip moves so let's look for those moves uh, against 91.20 targeting 92.45 so that's kind of what I'm looking for on the Aussie dollar does anybody have any questions on the Aussie dollar any questions comments anything I missed there uh, please don't hesitate send them on over um because there's some really good stuff in the works on the Aussie dollar so so we're looking at that and uh, we're ready to do some trading on that little uh, that little dude uh, yen pair is not super exciting to me at this moment in time pound yen's made some pretty fantastic moves and it's also made some pretty nice little retracements here uh, you can see the daily chart we have this huge price rejection um, and it's been a nice little run there, but it might be ready for some pullback. And I think it probably is. We've got a missed weekly pivot here. We've got a couple of daily pivots that are missed back down here. So, uh, so let's keep an eye on that. But let's also remember that we have a bit of a bull flag set up in the works too. This thing has run pretty much straight up, and now we've uh, now 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 we're seeing some retracement and some pullback of this little movement here. So let's just keep our eye on that. Let's watch this pullback. Let's watch that retracement. But let's look for a breakout of that bullish flag and start uh, um, looking for some opportunities to catch some of this retracement. Oftentimes when we have these pin bars, these big hammers and, and shooting stars and so on, the market will retrace uh, a bit. Uh, it'll, it'll pull back from that, uh, run back up, and oftentimes give us maybe a short-term double top or something. So we're looking for that little short-term double top. Let's watch, let's trade the break up and a continuation uh, uh, back down for some further retracement. But at this moment, let's just look for the um, bullish breakout of a, of a continuation pattern that we have right here. Uh, same thing on Euro Yen. Euro Yen has broken out just a little bit, but this is a nice little uh, bull flag as well. Straight up movement, uh, retracement. Let's look for the breakout to the upside here. So on the short term, we're getting into some highs on this Euro Yen, but at least if we can trade this thing back into the highs, there's 65 to 70 pips there. 
Um, so let's be watching for that. This could make that dip down into the weekly pivot, but I'm not counting on it just yet. Uh, I'm just going to be basically watching for the break of this bull flag and an entry into those upper levels there on the euro yen. Everything else I'm not super duper interested in too much at this moment. Um, Aussie, uh, Euro Aussie, Pound Swiss Frank, all those guys. I'm just keeping an eye on them. Uh, but I think our best opportunities are going to be probably on the pound yen with this bull flag and on the euro yen with this bull flag and then on the Aussie dollar uh, buying the dip and targeting some of these upper miss levels for this week and pound dollar uh, selling rallies against 162.50, uh, 60 area and euro dollar waiting for a break of 94.90 to target ultimately 130. Good grief, not 94.90. I don't know. I'm so many pairs on the mind. Uh, 134.90, targeting ultimately 13200 or 135.75, targeting 136.30, 137.00, 137.800, all up in that uh, in, in in those areas. But let's watch these levels. Let's watch these channels. Let's look for these breaks, and let's keep the bigger picture in mind, which is absolutely what we need to be watching right now in all of these pairs. So I'm going to update the notes, but I hope that was useful, and I hope you guys are going to be watching some of these levels. We've had some great trades and some great breakouts already to start the week off, and there's just more to come. So uh, hopefully uh, uh, questions were answered and things are, are made semi-clear there. Questions, comments, please do not hesitate to let me know. I'm happy to go over anything. Um, and uh, just send them over. I'm going to be updating the notes and getting this recording posted as we speak.